there, campers. It's another glorious day at Camp One Clap on the One Clap Speech and Debate podcast. I'm your camp director and host of the One Clap Speech and Debate podcast, Lyle Wiley. Congress competitors, it's day 16 of camp, and Counselor Alexis Worthen is dropping part three of her four-part series, Capturing the Congress Crown. This week's episode is called Speaking to Success. Don't forget to check the One Clap socials for today's social media challenge topic. It sure has been a lot of fun to see everyone's posts. Additionally, the ABCs of debate with Professor Graham and Kevin, created by Counselor Adrian Graham, keeps the debate terms bopping with hot takes and smart examples. I mean, you really got to see this series. If you haven't been watching it, you're in for a treat when you go to YouTube and start watching it because it's infectious. All right, campers, enough with the formalities. Let's get ready for episode three of Capture the Congress Crown with Counselor Alexis Worthen, speaking to success. All right, and welcome back to this week's episode of Capturing the Congressional Crown with Alexis Worthen. I'm super excited for this week, guys. Um, Just like, again, with our Congress bills, our kind of our episode this week mirrors um, that of what a Congress bill should mirror, the media section, which is speaking. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into that and just, you know, talking about some general finer points that I think will ultimately really boost your performance in what Congress and kind of what a speech like that is supposed to be. Um, Something that I think people really get tripped up on is how fast Congress speeches actually go. Um, They are three minutes to three minutes and 10 seconds. Three minutes and 10 seconds is like the hard amount of time that you have. Um. But today we'll be kind of going over that. So we not necessarily speaking to like authorship or sponsorship bills. We've already covered that. But we're going to be talking about kind of um, what you'll be spending most of your time doing is making affirmative or um, negating speeches. Um, So uh, let's dive right in. So if you're called on to speak, well, actually, first, let me let's talk about something that's really important to me. Okay, here's the deal. A lot of the times Congress can get held up because people don't have speeches prepared on the next bill or whatever. So they, we have like we, people like pitch a fit because they need to speak on that bill and that's the only bill that they can speak on. And so we spend an entire hour and a half, almost two hour session just on a singular bill because that's the only one people prep for. Here's the here's the deal. I understand like you, people panic and like they want to be able to speak on a bill that they prepared on. That's fine. I get that. I totally understand. But there is a lot of extemporaneous speaking that you should be able to do in Congress. Um, my biggest advice, especially if you're a novice starting out in Congress, um. Don't go right away into Congress. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. You have half a season to really kind of figure out what you want to do. And if you already know that like Congress is something you want to do, hold up, take a pause. Instead of doing Congress at one tournament or whatever, do extemp. I personally, I mean, I do extemp on my own. That's what, that's the event that I've gone to nationals twice in. Um, So I, I'm a little bit biased during it to extent, but I think genuinely it is the one event that can prepare you for everything. And we've talked about this before, but I think that if people like, if you are incapable of being able to prepare a speech because the round is functioning quicker than you thought it would, or you want to, you know, debate on something else, if you're incapable of preparing a speech quickly and having a decent speech, It doesn't have to be your best speech ever, but I think sometimes the pressure can, I mean, certainly I've made my better speeches on on the fly, on the cuff. But if you can't do that, then I don't think Congress is right for you. Not that you can't make your way toward it. I'm not saying that. But to be a truly great Congress speaker, I think you should be able to have that impromptu skill under your belt and be able to research these topics very quickly. So with that out of the way, Here's my, here's the thing. So once we get that going, um, I would say that, you know, if you want to go in and prepare for every single bill that you see, um, that's in the docket or the Google drive or whatever that's provided to you before a tournament, that's fine. Um, I do think that will kind of 
like make makes it really hard for you to um be able to like actually do what you're supposed to be able to do in Congress is because it's a debate. It's a debate event. And you're supposed to be able to respond to unique attacks. And that's how Congress gets so boring is because people talk about the same frigging stuff because that's all they prepare for is to talk about two main points on each side. And then people just go back and forth and back and forth on these two points. That's how Congress gets boring. So either be able to speak speak extemporaneously based on the NSD refers to it on an outline of notes rather than a word for word from a manuscript or be using some chat GPT. Maybe like later in the year, I saw that a lot of people were using chat GPT in the round. Not that I don't think that chat GPT can be good for getting some ideas flowing, but if you're only, if you're using chat GPT for all of your speech, that's not, that's not good. We should not be doing that. Um, never build up that habit. And I don't know if there's actual like rules prohibiting it right now, but why be like, why prepare yourself to like fail? Why be setting yourself up for failure by using chat GPT? Because that's what it is. You, I would say the chat GPT is a good way to get some ideas flowing. Maybe, um, I would avoid using it at a tournament. At any any time a judge can see you. That's my thing. If a judge can see you using chat GPT, I think you're, I, the, I mean, personally for me, I would rank you lower. That's just, if I can see that. Um, yeah, but that's my thing. Anyways, so now that you've kind of like written your speech, you're prepared, you have your like your, your uh, notes and you're ready to go. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to also be able to take your computer up with you. I think that's fine as well, um, especially if there's a podium. If there's not a podium, um, it depends. But again, remember that you're doing this to some extent off the fly. And I think that's okay. And I think we can be bold and we can be brave and we can do it. So our speech. Okay, so we'll start off with the introduction first. Now, the introduction, that's maybe 15 to 30 seconds of your time. You open up and then you give your thesis or your, um, you know, you're saying what you're going to have and then you're going to give your main three points in your body um, and then you're going to give your provide your impacts at the end as, well, as to why we ultimately should affirm your side and then you go. That's it. It's three minutes of your time. Um, so starting off with the introduction, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, people use quotations. Um, let's see, or AGDs, like uh, the road to hell is often paved with good intentions. Um, there's green tea, there's white tea, and then there's reality. Or there's um, famous quotes from historical figures. And not to say that I'm not like above using quotations. I've used a couple in my time, not going to say that. Um, I think if you're using a gen, like a very obviously canned intro or your um, quote does not have anything to do at all of what your speech is, then I automatically scratch that. And then I think that you like that. If like an experienced, experienced judge is paying attention, then they're going to mark you off for that. Um, I like to do either one of two things. Um, I think a joke, a funny, good joke is so special if like you do make me if you make me laugh as a judge in a congress round like that's so many points in your favor um i think my favorite joke that i ever told um i think lyle actually judged me for this one because i remember reading his ballot about it but um we were doing a bill about it was an nsda bill about um banning the use of like short haul flights which would be disastrous obviously but we were doing this bill and I negated it and I got up there and I started off with a Taylor Swift lyric and I said, um, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. While Taylor Swift is a brilliant musician, she also agrees that it is a problem when it comes to celebrity jet fuels. And then I provided a statistic about, like, for example, Taylor, because she had the most like celebrity, uh, like use the most mileage on her jet and then like a, a bunch of others. And then I turned it into this is why we negate this bill and also here's a better and I proposed a plan for a better idea, which is to ban celebrity jets, essentially. Um, would that work out in the long run? Maybe not. But again, Congress should be grounded in reality, but also we're in a vacuum. So kind of remember that as we go through it. Um, but if you come up with a really good joke, that's huge points in your favor. 
um, if you can't come up with a joke, let's be honest, sometimes you can't make a joke about like a really serious issue. Like um, the Flint water crisis, that's always a big one. Don't make jokes about the Flint water crisis. Or um, if it's a shooting bill, like a like a school shooter gun control bill, don't make jokes about that. Don't, don't go with my jokes. Um, I would say statistics are, I think numericals always stick with people. Um, it also is a short thing that judges can write down if they're like, you know, taking notes during your speech, which is, I think, helpful too. Um, or like a little, like a mini story, um, like a nothing that's like longer than 15 seconds, but like making it a real world issue and allowing people to kind of place themselves in the foot of like in the shoes of real people experiencing an issue and using that to kind of aid your speech um, is something that I think is really, really good. Um, and it kind of furthers up your kind of like impacts at the very end and your conclusion um, about as to why. And you can bring it back. And then your speech is all wrapped up in a nice little bow. Okay. And then you go in, you give your thesis. And so today we'll be providing uh, two, three main reasons as to why we should negate this bill. Um, and like, again, following that, that mini claim warrant impact kind of thing, right? Just again, that mini side. And that'll take about, that's two minutes or so. That shouldn't be really – so if you're doing like 15 seconds, you're at 2.15. I would honestly say you can go two to three, two minutes and 30 seconds on your body. Um, you, I know often people are like rushing through. If you're rushing through a Congress speech, you're doing it wrong. Um, you're not filibustering. We don't operate like that. But if you can provide just kind of key ideas and good, uh, strong – universal argumentation that can stick with a lot of people, then you're good. And you don't have to really get into the nitty gritty and spread. If anyone's spreading in Congress, then I think they're doing it wrong. Spreading is for policy and parliamentary debate. And unless you can do it really well, for some reason, if you're really good at spreading, but um, rarely are, especially if you're a novice, rarely are you ever good at spreading because I talk fast. I'm sure people have probably noticed by now. Um, I talk really fast and I have to remind myself to slow down. That is a frequent note that I get, um, from my coaches. So now that you've kind of finished up, um, you, again, you've provided everything that you can. Uh, I would say numerically, I would have maybe three statistics. I would say three statistics per speech, maybe three to five. Um, I think numerical analysis and data is so important, but also I don't think it should be the point of a speech. If I hear like the phrase, now let me do a little math here. Let's do math. And you spend like a minute and a half talking about statistics. Your judges are going to be lost and they're not paying attention to a single word you're saying. I promise. I promise. Um, especially if they're a lay judge. And no matter how like critical it is to your argument, I get it. But if you're spending more than 30 seconds doing math in your speech, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you're doing spending more than 30 seconds doing math in your speech, then your judges will forget. But that's – so you just make sure you balance out that like statistics. That's important. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, just remember to also signpost as well. I think signposting is super important. If you have a, like a really clear structure in your speech and your judges, again, like an extemp speech, your extemp speech like structures, similar to how you would do that, uh, that is so, so important. And that just like, it's really, it makes it so easy for someone to judge you is to write down what exactly is in your speech. Your so we talk about my first point. My first point, my tag is um, peanut butter. Okay. I, usually I would say what to her tag should be like one to three words. So my first tag is peanut butter. So now I talk about peanut butter and then I address everything. But moving now on to my second point of jelly. Now my jelly point, I just f continue to affirm it. And then finally, we all wrap it up with a nice little bow in my third tag, with, in my third point, which is bread. Now, bread is clearly the most important part and blah, 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 blah. You get the point, right? Okay. So after that, um, you finished, you've um, brought it back to your AGD, summarized your key arguments. Then you sit and then you get cut off. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about, um, I think, uh, time in your, um, in the CX, uh, not the CX, apologies, in the um, PO episode. But essentially, my opinion, if you're going over three minutes, no one's paying attention to your speech after that. 
because everyone's counting down. Your judges aren't paying attention. They're watching. Oh my gosh, is she going to go over time? What's going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. Be wrapping it up at the very latest by 3.05. Um, it's, I think that like just that can clear, you filled your time, but you didn't cross eye the or toe the line of people paying attention. You've maximized your time and now you open yourself up to cross-examination. And that really kind of, I think, sums up speaking um, for this episode. So if you have any questions at all, remember my name, my email is alexis.g.worthen at gmail.com, all lowercase, or my Instagram is at alexisgworthen. Um, it's been a super fun week. I love talking about speaking. If you have any questions at all, um, please don't be afraid to reach out to me. Um, and this was episode three, speaking on capturing the congressional crown with Counselor Worthen. Hey, thanks so much to Camp Counselor Alexis Worthen. Alexis will close out her fabulous Congress series with episode four of Capturing the Congress Crown next Tuesday at Camp One Clap. What should you look forward to at camp tomorrow? Well, episode three of Troop Leader Talk with Counselor Marcus Viney and Counselor Bailey Patterson will hit the airwaves. Troop Leader Talk explores what it means to lead your troop as a coach and prepare students to navigate the world with clarity, courage, and the spirit of a true champion. Also, Counselor Adrian Graham will drop yet another fire episode of Professor Graham and Kevin's ABCs of Debate. Remember, social media challenges are live for every day of camp this August. And until tomorrow, campers, I'm a little bummed. I went to find a camouflage tent the other day, but I couldn't find any. For Camp One Clap, this is Camp Director Wiley signing off.